A pleasant evening and a warm welcome to the National News on Channel I. I'm Dlanjali Ananda. Good evening, I'm Uvin Hetiarachi and here are today's headlines. Shilpa Bimani Awards held under the patronage of the President. A certified rate of 75 rupees for a kilogram of paddy. 40 billion rupees to compensate the paddy farmers who incurred losses from organic farming. Public Utilities Commission states that there will be no power interruptions until Thursday. A survey report reveals that Sri Lanka is the country with the lowest electricity charges levied in the region. The need for the booster vaccine re-emphasized. A heroin consignment detected in the Southern Sea reaches the Colombo Harbour. Now on to those and more stories in detail. On today's top story, the Shilpa Bimani 2021 Presidential Handicraft Award Ceremony was held under the patronage of the President Gotabe Rajapaksha today, felicitating the creative works of traditional and modern artisans across the country at provincial and national levels. The ceremony was held at the Sirimavo Bandaranaika Memorial Exhibition and Centre, and the Shilpa Abhimani 2021 Presidential Handicrafts Award Ceremony is held annually with the aim of preserving, developing and encouraging outstanding creations of traditional, cultural and artistic value. The award ceremony was organised by the National Crafts Council under the guidance of the State Minister, Ministry of Rutan, Brass, Pottery, Furniture and Rural Industrial Promotion. A panel of judges of university lecturers and professors selected the designs under 21 main categories. Silver awards were presented to the winners of selected at the provincial level out of 8,000 creations. The president presented the gold awards to two nationally acclaimed artists in the fields of traditional and modern art. Financial assistance were presented for two artisans symbolizing the provision of lifelong financial assistance to artisans who have made the contribution for the betterment of the handicraft sector. Minister Dallas Allah Perriman presented a postage stamp and a first day cover issued to mark the award ceremony to the President. President Rajapaksha inspected the winning creations in the Shilpa Bimani 2021 competition and congratulated the award winning artists. Minister Vimal Veeravansha, State Minister Prasanna Ranavira, Secretaries to the Ministries, Chairman of the National Crafts Council Sampath Irhapole, Government officials and award-winning artists and many others were present at the award ceremony. The government has allocated 40,000 million rupees worth provisions as compensation for the damages caused by paddy harvests. Meanwhile, the Cabinet of Ministers had approved a certified price of 75 rupees to purchase a kilogram of paddy. These remarks were shared during a media briefing held to announce Cabinet decisions at the Government Information Department today. Minister Mahindananda Aludgamage said that farmer community expressed an objection to a certain extent following the import ban on the chemical fertilizer. He also said that certain entities have misled the farmer community with falsified information. The minister said that the government extended an assurance to the farmer community over the supply of fertilizer to be able to engage in cultivations without any fear, following a request made by the ministry. He added that the government also assured a compensation for the farmer community in case of shortage in their productions. Accordingly, he further said that the farmer communities which had faith in the government have cultivated in 800,000 hectares as estimated during the Maha season amidst many challenges. The minister pointed out that 10% to 20% shortages of harvests were observed in certain districts in the country. However, such shortages were observed in the cultivations which were carried out after the commencement of the season. Therefore, he said that no entity can direct allegations to the government in this regard. However, the minister emphasized that the farmer community will be compensated for the incurred losses as they put their faith in the government in implementing this program. The minister further said that government, the cabinet approval was given for both private sector as well as the paddy marketing board to purchase paddy at competitive rates. Accordingly, he said that a decision was reached to allow Paddy Marketing Board to purchase a kilogram of paddy at a rate of 75 rupees. He added that the purchasing rate given by the present government was doubled than the rate extended by the Yaha Parana government. The minister urged the consumers not to panic over the rate increase as the government has already decided to import rice. He said that since the rice mill mafia 
and maintain the paddy, rise, paddy price rates at a high level and fairly, the government has to maintain a paddy's reserve and import rice to a certain extent in order to control the overall price rates. Meanwhile, responding to queries raised by journalist Minister Dallas al Peruma said that no power interruptions will take place from today and relevant decisions in this regard have already been reached. Cabinet spokesman Minister Dallas al Peruma said that the President has assured that no such interruptions would take place in the country, which was reassured from the statements issued by its subject ministers as well as relevant institutions. He said that the attention should be directed on how to make certain commitments at the crisis situation. He added that state institutions should take necessary measures to use electricity in an efficient manner. Public Utilities Commission says that Sri Lanka is the country with the lowest electricity charges levied in the region. Chairman of the Commission, Janaka Ratnaika, pointed out that the consumers have neglected the payment of 50 billion rupees worth electricity bills during the past one and a half years. Chairman of the Public Utilities Commission, Janaka Ratnaika, said that the expenditure is at 22 rupees. However, he added that the Salon Electricity Board only charged an amount of 16 rupees. He said that the electricity charges have not been increased in 2014 as the consumers are still paying the electricity charges which prevailed in 2002 and 2003. He also said that no power interruptions will occur until January 27th. The future objective of the government is to expand the renewable energy distribution up to 70%. However, the Electricity Consumers Association allege that the electricity engineers are attempting to interrupt the electricity supply through scheduling at present. The association has urged the authorities to inquire the, into the behaviour of inefficient officials and take legal action accordingly. They made these remarks while speaking at a media briefing held in Colombo today. The National Secretary of Electricity Consumers Association, Sanjeeva Dhammika, said that the main duty of the engineers of CEB is to manage electricity. He said that the government has planned to expand the distribution of renewable energy up to 70% by 2030. However, he said that the success of the initiative has been hampered due to the actions of engineers. He added that the first electricity crisis occurred in November 29th following a breakdown of the grid which led to a power shedding schedule. He added that the crisis continued due to various sabotages. He further said under such circumstances, the power plants in the country have to be in full operation, which consumes a large quantity of diesel for thermal energy, leading to further depletion of the dollar reserves. Health authorities indicate that about 50 to 60 percent of individuals directed to PCR tests at present report as COVID infected persons. Health authorities have pointed out that the importance in receiving the booster vaccine while adhering to necessary health protective guidelines. We know that at this moment there is a slight increase of cases reported in Sri Lanka and also number of cases reported has been in a way attributed to the increase of Omicron percentage among the COVID-19 positive patients. However, at present, we know that Omicron variant has been catching up and probably replaced by the Delta variants in the country and the percentage is gradually going up and at present, most of the places there are reports that hospital capacity has been almost saturated but that it's not the case. Basically, the number of wards and the beds allocated at present for the COVID patients are being gradually saturated but that doesn't mean that the hospitals are not in a position to accommodate any more patients and therefore our capacity has not exceeded but we do not want to have the same experience again what we need to do is to control the disease by adhering to the health guidelines and getting the appropriate vaccines on time and thereby we should be able to control the disease rather than going into a catastrophic situation that we experienced few months ago 
Minister Dallas al Hatparam, speaking at the media briefing held at the Government Information Department today, emphasized that the public should receive the booster vaccine without pushing the country back to many social and economic issues and concerns in order to maintain the present progressive levels. The programs to inoculate the first dose of Pfizer vaccine for students between the ages of 12 and 15, as well as the second dose for students between the ages of 16 and 19, were held successfully in schools island-wide. A total of 35,302,000 465 vaccine doses have been inoculated on the people in the country under the COVID-19 immunization program. Accordingly, 16,463,502 persons have received the first dose of the vaccine, while 13,886,321 have received both the doses. A total of 4,952,642 have received the booster dose thus far. The Director General of Health Services confirmed 17 COVID-related deaths which had occurred yesterday. Meanwhile, the Cabinet of Ministers has granted approval to increase the grant amount of worth 600,000 rupees extended under the Home for You, a future for the country housing program. The relevant proposal was presented by Prime Minister Mahindra Rajpaksha. This project, inaugurated in 2020, was implemented for low-income earning families residing in temporary houses. As the cost of construction materials have been escalated by multiple amounts at present, a decision was reached to increase the amount of grant paid under the program to selected beneficiary families up to 650,000 rupees with effect from this year. A cabinet of ministers granted approval to entrust 50 health institutions within the state sector to provincial health authorities. The relevant proposal was presented by Minister Kehliya Rambukwalla. Accordingly, 58 health institutions will be transferred to the provincial health authorities under the Phase 1. Cabinet of Ministers also granted approval to implement the national policy on quality and safety of health services. The revel proposal was furnished by Minister Kehliya Rambukwalla. Measures were taken to revise the policy based on the resolutions adopted in the 72nd World Health Assembly in 2019 on global action on patient safety. Meanwhile, approval of the Cabinet of Ministers was granted for the national project to provide investment opportunities to new entrepreneurs for business development and establishment of small and medium scale industrial zones at regional and district level. The proposal was presented by Minister Vimal Vinaransha. Meanwhile, two fishing vessels were apprehended by Sri Lankan Navy along with 330 kilograms of heroin consignment brought to the Colombo port today. The raid was jointly conducted by Sri Lankan Navy, State Intelligence Service and Police Narcotics Bureau. The haul of heroin was detected during a special operation conducted by the Navy offshore patrol vessel Samudra on January 17th and 22nd. Accordingly, 16 suspects have been apprehended. The Sri Lankan Navy said the value of the heroin consignment is estimated at 3,300 million rupees. The record heroin was detected in 390 packets, which had been stuffed in 13 sacks. Information had been received that the masterminding of the racket is based in Dubai. The apprehended haul of heroin was observed by Defence Secretary General Kamal Gunaratna. Navy Commander Vice Admiral Nishanta Uluge Thanna and Police Media Spokesman SSP Nihal Taldua. Harvesting of Del Maga paddy field in Mine Gamu, Pandala, is currently underway at present. The cultivations were carried out using organic fertilizer. The organic fertilizer prepared by farmers and liquid fertilizer provided by the government were used for cultivations. The farmers said that the cultivations were protected from various crop damages following the use of organic fertilizer and liquid fertilizer. The weight of the harvest in this season has been increased. Harvesting of turmeric cultivation in six divisions in Valawa zone is currently underway at present. The relevant cultivations have been carried out using organic fertilizer. The farmers have said that they were able to reap a harvest of 5,000 kilograms of turmeric from one acre. Asian Development Bank Country Director for Sri Lanka Chen Chen says that small and medium enterprises in Sri Lanka must compete with the international firms in the globalization process. The ADB country director further said that local agencies have to assist such enterprises to reach international standard in the process. He made these remarks whilst addressing the 63rd annual general meeting for National Chamber of Commerce of Sri Lanka. 
The 63rd Annual General Meeting was held yesterday in Colombo to elect the office bearers of the National Chamber of Commerce of Sri Lanka. Asian Development Bank's country director Chen Chen attended the annual general meeting as the chief guest, while the Turkish ambassador to Sri Lanka, Rakib Demet Serki Siaglu, was the guest of honor. During the meeting, President of the National Chamber of Commerce Sri Lanka, Nandika Budipala, was elected for the second term. Diplomats, dignitaries, including industry leaders, were present at the occasion. The Chamber's care and support to small and medium entrepreneurs, including women like SMEs, are acknowledged by many. I'm delighted to note that in the past few years, the Chamber and ADB have been good partners in promoting the development of SME sector in Sri Lanka. Together, we worked towards easing SME finance and supporting SME during the COVID-19 pandemic. SME segments is an important strategic segment for promoting growth and social development in Sri Lanka. They account for more than 45% of employment, 52% of GDP, and 20% of export, while comp comprising more than 75% of the country's enterprise in total. Compared with large-scale enterprise, the SME segment of Sri Lanka still requires more dynamics and further development, better integration with global value chains, and is expected to contribute more effectively to economic growth in the post-COVID-19 era. Turkey regards Sri Lanka as a friend and a partner in various avenues, ranging from our rich historical ties to modern days, relations in fields of social, political, and economic cooperation. In fact, both our countries share many similarities in terms of the potential role they can be played in the international arena. There's much historical evidence that highlights the rich historical ties maintained between Ceylonese and Turks. The National Chamber strongly believes in creating connectivity between local entrepreneurs and international markets, where we need to find a nation, national, and international market opportunities for SMEs in the country. We understood the importance of conducting virtual B2B meetings with the support of our diplomatic services and foreign ministry together with our linkages with other chambers throughout the world in the absence of available, available opportunities in exchanging trade delegations physically due to prevailing pandemic situation uh, in the country. We have already concluded several B2B virtual business forums with Turkey, Your Excellency with your assistance as well as our ambassador in Turkey uh, with his assistance, including Adana Chamber of Commerce and Adana Chamber of Industries with participation of more than 60 companies from both the sides. We have further signed MOUs with other regional chambers, specifically in Tur Turkey, such as Sinop Chamber of Commerce, Eger Chamber of Commerce, and Erusalem Chamber of Commerce and Industry as well. We have signed MOUs with Oman Chamber of Commerce and Industries and conducted a business forum with uh, participation of government authorities from both the sides of the countries and a B2B meeting virtually bringing in more than 50 business uh, companies together. Chamber has been able to conduct business forum with Japan with the support of uh, Sri Lankan embassy in Japan, uh, Japanese embassy in Colombo, and the Sri Lankan Business Council of Japan. More than 60 Sri Lankan companies were connected to the business forum objective. We further conducted a virtual business forum and B2B meeting with Kuwait Chamber of Commerce and Industry with the participation of BOI, EDB, Sri Lanka, and their counterparts from Kuwait as well. More than 40 business companies participated in this virtual B2B exercise, uh, aiming at improving our trade and the uh, investments uh, between countries. 
Jaipurit chanting program under the theme Blessings of the Triple Gem for a Prosperous New Year is set to take place in Colombo tomorrow. The Pirit chanting program organized at the BMI CH premises will be held to invoke blessings upon the people in the country as well as the world affected by COVID-19 pandemic and the government headed by the president. The Jayapurit chanting program will be held with the participation of 1,000 bhikkhus led by chief prelates and deputy chief prelates across the country. The program will be held in accordance with health protective guidelines and with the participation of a limited number of invitees. Family members of the diseased war veterans and a group representing disabled war veterans are expected to take part in the event. Blessings will be invoked on the tri forces the police and civil defense department during this program an all night prayer chanting ceremony will be held tomorrow followed up by an arms giving program on the next day morning the program has been organized by presidential secretariat and many other institutions including the ministry of defense now for a look at several local news stories in brief the Central Environmental Authority has initiated a project to collect domestic electric and electronic waste in Western Province on January 28th and 29th. A media conference to brief on the initiative was held with the participation of Minister Mahinda Maravira in Colombo today. Accordingly, the waste will be collected in 40 centres from 9am to 4.30pm. Steps have been taken to initiate mobile service under the title of Access to Justice covering Northern Province from tomorrow until the 30th. Accordingly, the aim of this project is to create awareness of the services extended by the Ministry of Justice and affiliated institutions. A media conference to brief on the project was held on Colombo with the participation of Minister Ali Sabri. Minister Bandula Gunawardana has said the maximum trade benefits can be reaped through Sri Lanka-Pakistan free trade agreement. The minister made these remarks during a meeting with Pakistan Foreign Minister Shah Mahmoodi Qureshi. The 63rd Annual General Meeting of the Sri Lanka Audit Services Association was held in Bathramulla today. Speaker Mahindayapa Abevardhana, Parliamentarian Charitha Hera and Auditor General WGC Vikramaratna were present at the occasion. The construction of the new fish market in Ratnapura was commenced today. It was held with the participation of Mayor Tiron Atanayaka. The main objective of this project is to establish a new fish market to bring all fish stores placed in different parts of the city under one roof and the beautification of the city. Financial provisions worth 10 million rupees have been allocated for this project. Child Guidance Centre titled City Chair is to provide education for children with special needs in Hambantara district was declared open today in Malpatthava area in Am Ambalantota. This initiative has been implemented by the Department of Social Services. Mr. Nama Rajpaks and State Minister Dr. Sudarshini Fernandopule were present at this occasion. 178 Samurdi beneficiary families in Kegol Divisional Secretariat Division received sewing machines yesterday. The event was held with the participation of the State Minister Tarka Balasuria. The intention of this project is to direct Samurdi beneficiary families towards self employment opportunities. State Minister D.B. Herath said that a program to self sustain the country with liquid milk has been initiated. A program to brief state officials over this initiative was held recently at the Ruan Valley Divisional Secretariat Office. Sabaragamu Provincial Governor Tikri Kobakadu was present at this occasion. That's it for tonight's English News Update. Thank you for joining us. Good night. Good night.